that we have this many people that are interested in uh, what we do. So what Martin and I have prepared here is um, a little slideshow, but first I want to give you a brief introduction of kind of how our collaboration came to be. Um, as was mentioned, in 2001, I took over the chef position at Trio in Evanston, which is just outside of Chicago, and kind of started this new, uh, started cooking in this style, which, you know, kind of has been difficult to define in a lot of ways and put, put a terminology on it. Some people say avant-garde, some people say molecular gastronomy, some people say hypermodern. Um, but basically, what ended up happening was I came to the realization in 2001 that the food that we were doing and the manipulations that we were making coming up with new textures and new shapes and different aesthetics, all of this food was new. And yet, we were still trying to serve it on conventional serviceware. Am I right, my head right in the way? So, you know, you're, you're dealing with forks and spoons and knives and plates that have been used for hundreds of years, but yet the, the cuisine itself is very new and very modern. So they just didn't work. It wasn't functional in some cases. So I contacted Martin and we began collaborating on service pieces that actually made sense with the food. And this is kind of what we came up with. I guess I should say that what was interesting about uh, Grant's inquiry for me was that he didn't ask for a plate or a spoon or a knife. He asked for a new way of serving new food, which meant that we could disregard the main constraint of designing serviceware, which is versatility. Basically, majority of the of the serviceware that is conventional is designed to do many things fairly well, but it's not designed to do one specific thing perfectly. And we could actually drop this constraint and, and think of very precise culinary concept and address it in a very precise way of a utensil or serviceware. Um, yeah, so we'll just walk through. Scared. We'll just show you a few of our um, basically concepts and explain basically the, the culinary impetus and then my solution or our solution. I'll we'll start with the squid. Yeah, this thing's scary. It's making noises here. So this is uh, this is what we call the squid, um, for obvious aesthetic reasons. This was, I think, the second piece that we did together. And what we were trying to achieve here was a piece that would hold a tempura fried foodstuff, um, allowing it to remain crisp. In other words, the original way that we served um, the, the, the first dish that we did was in a Pilsner glass. So it literally would come out of the hot oil, it would be put in the Pilsner glass. Obviously there's a lot of condensation building up, the tempura sogs out. So I pre presented that problem to Martin and this was the service related solution. And I think what's also important, obviously the function keeping the tempura very crispy is, is critical but also from my perspective, the aesthetic value and what it allows us to do uh, conceptually is that we're able to present food standing up. And in all of these cases that you just saw there, um, the actual thing that is coming up vertically is the utensil. So in this case, you have smoldering oak branches. The guest would actually pick that up by the branch and eat it directly off of that. So now you have a visual cue as to kind of how the dish should be consumed. And it's, I think it's just a striking presentation. So. Yeah, I don't know. There's probably not much to add. I should just say that it imitates the Pilsner glass shape because it made sense formally. But um, basically, we eliminated, or I eliminated, the glass, which uh, was basically restricting the airflow. So this way, um, the wires distribute the weight so it doesn't the tempura is not crushed and also allows airflow around the piece. And then the little clutch basically allows you to tighten, tighten the food stuff. And then it's, there's a weighted stainless steel bottom which balances the whole, whole assembly. Um, Can I interrupt with a quick question? Mm -hmm. um, is that an autumnal dish or do you serve the oak leaves, the beautiful uh, colored oak leaves in the summer and in the spring as well? Or does that change with the seasons? Right, that's a very fall only dish. Obviously, yep. Yeah. Why don't you do that one since that was your? Okay. Um, this one is called Antenna, and actually the project started with my elaboration on the subject of skewer because I was always, let's say, puzzled by 
being presented with a skewer on a plate and a knife and a fork because it seemed extremely extraneous, excessive, and also clumsy. So my solution was to create a self-supporting skewer which, will, which essentially balances the food elevated in the air. And the diner has the choice of either eating directly off the skewer without the use of hands or can actually rock the piece and uh, eat off the wire. For me, this one was, was our, one of our biggest, I guess you'd call it victories, um, as far as service pieces, because as Martin explained, this, this piece sits directly on the table and elevates the food about anywhere from 14 to 16 inches off the table surface. So basically right at mouth height when you're seated. Um, so here we are in this, in this very kind of, generally speaking, uh, formal environment. You know, although we try to break that, obviously we try to break that kind of stereotype early on. But you're, you're presenting people with food that's kind of floating in the air above the table and you're telling them it's okay to lean forward and just eat it directly off this, this wire. And people are either alarmed <laughs> or, or intimidated or they laugh. And I think this is when, at least for me, and I think probably for Martin as well, this is when we realized that we were really onto something about controlling the experience and, and bringing an emotional level to eating that was really important to us. You know, here we are giving people something like this, and it, and it really it changes the way their three hours or four hours spent at the restaurant is perceived, which is pretty unique. This one's called the eye. Um, again, presented Martin with a very specific problem. This was a palate cleanser developed, um, basically a very thin ice chip that I was having a hard time transporting from the kitchen to the dining room without it deteriorating. Uh, we tried everything. We tried setting it on a block of ice. We tried a couple of different things that were at our disposal as cooks and none of them worked. So I told him that we needed to come up with a service piece that would allow the transportation into the dining room without the ice chip melting. So basically the solution is a pre-refrigerator refrigeration where you take a piece of ice, you put it in a hole, and it stayed cold until basically the whole thing came up to ambient temperature. So which could be very long. If it's really a hole in the ground, it could be months. Uh, so here we essentially freeze the assembly. It's a glass, pyrex, low expansion borosilicon glass core in an acrylic sleeve. The, the acrylic sleeve is a temperature buffer, so it actually prevents the glass from pulling heat out of the basically base of the table. And it creates a pool of cold air, basically below the rim of, of the acrylic sleeve. So you can put a piece of very, very thin piece of ice, say two millimeters, three millimeters, and it will stay frozen for, I don't know, you probably test it 20 minutes, 20 minutes or yeah. more, which otherwise wouldn't be possible. The glass is actually sanded um, to prevent sticking, because if you use a smooth surface and put a um, basically object onto it that's frozen, will we'll stick, will create vacuum. It's essentially, the, the rough surface of the glass prevents, prevents that. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. We'll do this. This, this uh, series of pedestals, um, we wanted, the concept was to basically reassemble food in front of the guest. So it's like a puzzle being reassembled at the table. And the guest um, not really seeing the final form of the dish without, um, without some involvement from the front of the house team, laying each piece down. You're seeing a couple of individual examples here. This was the original concept for this service piece where five or six bites of hearts of palm with different flavor compositions were laid down in front of the guest and it's a, it's an interesting way to interact with the guests and i think again aesthetically they're not seeing the final form until uh the fifth or sixth piece is laid down um yeah i guess i should just say that it's an it's an upright spoon essentially that's that's the whole concept where the stem is the handle and then the vessel is, is the top. Um, that way there's no handle surrounding and you can really reassemble, recompose uh, the pieces together. Um.
and it's porcelain, obviously. Um, okay, I guess Grant in this case asks for a service piece for a very thin, um, translucent and light piece of food stuff. And originally it was fruit leather. And um, I guess the, the question was how do you present that without losing the lightness and translucency? Because when you, when you lay a piece of translucent food on a plate, it obviously is not translucent anymore. And uh, it also isn't, loses the, the, the sense of lightness. So this way we are suspending the food and instead of creating a weighty base, my solution was to use tension as, as the main framework for the piece. So it, this is a bow and you could see, um, you, you saw a few images back that it actually is a two piece bow system where the tension is what, what suspends or what basically is the structural element for the whole piece. Um, the guests just pluck the food stuff off the bow and then spit it into their into their mouth. Um, I think, yeah. yeah, I mean, from our perspective, again, you have another piece that has such versatility. I mean, it has a very specific function, but I mean, we've done probably six or seven different compositions on it, all with the same properties of being thin and translucent, each of them being highly successful. And it also, the bow shape gives gives the food motion. So when it's set down on the table, it gently rocks and kind of provides a different element of presentation, which normally is very, obviously when you put a plate down or any, anything on the table, it, generally the food doesn't move. But in this case, it actually kind of sways gently, which is kind of attractive. This is a paraffin wax bowl with a stainless steel pin the idea here was to separate temperatures. And we wanted people to have a one bite of muse where they would experience a hot and a cold temperature at the same time. So what you see there is a, a truffle, basically a truffled potato soup in the, in the paraffin bowl. And then on the pin, uh, obviously black truffle on the very top. And then you have a ball of potato that's heated up in clarified butter um, so the potato, by the time the guest gets it, it's probably 200 degrees. The soup is probably 38 degrees. Then you have a chive, a little cube of butter, and some Parmesan cheese. And the way it works is the pin is pulled out, all the ingredients drop into the soup, and then like an oyster shell, you just slurp it back, experiencing both the hot texture, or the hot temperature of the potato ball and the cold temperature of the potato soup. Yeah, I guess I should just say that the, um, the reason to use the paraffin wax was, um, I was looking for a material that would what, what, how do I say it? That does not feel cold when it's cold. Essentially, the tactile properties permit you to hold it even though it's very cold, it's chilled. Um, and paraffin wax actually does that. You can, you can hold a very cold piece of wax and it does not feel, it does not, it's not uncomfortable to handle. And it's basically, that's, that's what allows us to um, do this. And then the, obviously, the pin elevates the hot, hot food stuff. Um, and the bowls are molded at the restaurant daily. They're produced every day. That's, you saw the images of the molds a little earlier. Um, they're cast by the staff. And, uh, Doesn't make the cook very happy. <laughs> <laughs> he has to make 90 wax bowls a day. This was the very first project that we did together. It's, uh, I presented Martin with the idea that I wanted to serve a frozen basically a frozen, uh, that's hibiscus tea, frozen into a ball, and it's basically just like a popsicle. So I, I approached him and said, make me a popsicle stick holder, and this is what I got. Yeah, basically it was, um, it, it made sense to me to make a self-contained collapsing piece that would allow you to serve um, the frozen, basically, or the ice ball, elevate it, and then collapse it for, for consumption. Because um, it's a little, you know, you cannot really hand a popsicle to a guest. It's, it's a little awkward. So uh, this way it can actually be presented on a tray and set down on the table and then the guest grabs it and co it collapses and for consumption. Yeah. Yeah, this is the last one. Um, we want, this is right now, currently, this is the Minyardis service at the restaurant. And what we wanted is a, uh, a multi-bite service piece that would give us um, 
the ability to serve very, very, very small, intense bites. And so basically it allowed, it allowed us at the end of the meal to present guests with different flavors and different textures, but not at that point fill them up. So those are like maybe an eighth of an inch bites of food right there at the end. I think it's fairly self-explanatory. <laughs> okay, I think that's it.